Okay, here we're going to look at a consolidation with less than 100% interest with a gain here. So for example here, the parent company, Corporation A, buys 80% here of Corporation B, the subsidiary. And it, they're going to pay $560,000 for 80% interest here. And the implied fair value here is $712,000. That's what we're going to have to calculate. And to do that, first we have to calculate the fair value of the net assets. So looking at our balance sheet here for the subsidiary, I've got the book value for the assets and the liabilities shown here, and then the fair value for the assets and liabilities were estimated here. So to determine the fair value of the net assets, we take the total assets here at their fair value of $920,000 less the fair value of the liabilities of $160,000. So the fair value of the net assets in this case is $760,000. Okay, now to calculate the implied fair value here of $712,000 for this subsidiary. So going through our logic here, if the parent pays $560,000 for 80% interest, then the total fair value of the subsidiary would be $560,000 divided by 80% or 0.8 here, that would be $700,000. Then the non-controlling interest share would be 20% of the $700,000 or would be equal $140,000. But the non-controlling interest value can never be less than the share of the fair value of the net assets assigned to it. In this case, it's $152,000. So let's look at our value analysis here. Our fair value of our net assets for the, for the implied fair value here was $760,000. And then the parent share here, 80% would be $608,000. And the non-controlling interest here would be $152,000. So the non-controlling share of the company value here would have to be raised to $152,000, replacing the $140,000 we calculated. So taking the non-controlling interest here of $152,000 plus the parent share here of $560,000. The total subsidiary fair value here, the implied fair value would be $712,000. All right, now to calculate our gain here. Since the price paid of $560,000 is less than the fair value of the net assets received here of $608,000 for the parent, we'd, the difference here would be recognized as a gain of $48,000. Now, uh, no gain here can be recognized as for the non-controlling interest here. That would have a zero gain. But looking at our total Im implied fair value here of $712,000 and compare that to the fair value of the net assets received of $760,000, thousand dollars that's also showing a gain here of forty eight thousand dollars all right now let's look at our distribution schedule starting with the fair value of the subsidiary the total fair value we calculated to be seven hundred and twelve thousand uh, dollars eighty percent the parents portion here was five hundred and sixty thousand and the non-controlling interest here for 20% was $152,000. So what we have to do is we have to subtract out the book value here of the equity acquired from the uh, subsidiary. And that total equity here was $335,000. So the parents portion here would be 80% of 335000 or 268000 That would be the book value here of that equity. And then the non-controlling interest here would be 20% of that 335000 or $67,000 for the book value here. Now we have to determine the excess of the fair value over the book value. So we take the, the uh, fair value here of $560,000 for the parent and subtract out the $268,000 book value portion and we get uh, $292,000 here for the excess. And then the same for the non-controlling interest. We s would subtract out here the book value of $67,000 from $152,000 and we'd get the excess here fair value over book value of $85,000. Now looking at the total value here of the subsidiary of $712,000, again we'd subtract out this total equity here of $335,000 and the excess of the fair value of the book here would be $377,000, which equals uh, the um, value here for the parent of $292,000 plus $85,000 here for the non-controlling interest. Okay, next
next we have to determine the adjustments that we have to make to the subsidiaries accounts in this consolidation. So looking at our balance sheet here, we have the book value here listed here and then we have the estimated fair value here listed for both the assets and the liabilities here. And what we do is we take the difference between the book value here and the fair value and those are the adjustments that we have to include for the subsidiary here. So looking down here at our adjustments accounts, I have them listed here for the adjustments that we'd have to make here. And I also have that gain included here of $48,000. So the total adjustments we'd have to make would be $377,000. Now this total, the total adjustments here has to agree with our distribution schedule here for the, um, the excess of the fair value over the book value here of $377,000, which it does. Okay, now looking at the journal entries that we'd have to make for this consolidation, starting with our adjustments accounts here, we'd have to first adjust the subsidiaries accounts for the assets and liabilities up here to their fair value. And then after doing that, we'd combine the fair value of the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary with the parent company's assets and liabilities. And that would be the consolidation here for the assets and liabilities. And it also includes this gain here. So looking here at the journal entries that we'd have to make here for the elimination of this excess of the fair value over the book value here, starting with the parent's amount here of $292,000, we'd eliminate that against the investment in the sub. So our investment in a sub here was $560,000, and we're going to eliminate $292,000 worth here. Now looking at the non-controlling interest excess here of $85,000, that would go to retained earnings. We'd increase retained earnings by $85,000. So we've accounted here for the total of this excess of the fair value over the book value here of $377,000 through the $292,000 amount here for the parent and $185,000 here for the non-controlling interest. And we'd also have to eliminate this equity, or 80% of the equity here of the sub, 80% um, of that $335,000, which was $268,000 here. So we'd eliminate the uh, that 80% of the common stock here and the retained earnings for a total amount here of $268,000. That would also be a reduction here in the investment in the sub by $268,000. So at the end here, our investment in the sub would be zero and this eliminating 80% of the subsidiary's equity here would also be uh, canceled out here.